Hey there kids, it's me, Mr. Kitty Pasta, and I've got a really awesome story for you. It's gonna be actually in a set of two, so look forward to the next one coming up soon. The author of tonight's story is also featured in a upcoming book. Both volumes one and two are gonna be available on Amazon. Calls from the Brighter Futures. Holy fuck. I've been off the grid, internet presence-wise, for the past two years. I, I have my reasons. Two days ago, I got reconnected to the world of social media and was blown away by what I saw. My company's name has been sensationalized worldwide in less than a month. It's taken me a while, but I'm almost done reading all the other posts, and I, I think I can help. The Brighter Futures Crisis Hotline has paid my bills for the last three years. There's been a lot of shit that's been going down during that time. A lot of people come and go through the doors. BFCH seems to chew employees up and spit them out like Copenhagen. Some in the most gruesome of ways. My name's Rebecca Ashley. You haven't read any stories here about me. I'm the office wallflower. I see everything and everyone, but most of them go by completely unnoticed, and that's okay. I could always change it if I wanted to. But I like it this way. Seems to be working so far. I mean, I mean, I'm still here, right? No one goes out of their way to invite me to the gatherings, and I've never had any exciting office romances or interests. I clock in, I answer phones, I eat lunch alone at my desk, answer more phones, punch out, and go home. Frankly, I don't understand what all the fuss is about. Companies hire humans. Humans are unpredictable, as is life. Every corporation has hires, fires, tragedies, and victories. What's the big deal? It's really not that exciting. You want to worry about something? Worry about the creeps taking pictures in my neighborhood at night. All right, forget everything I just said in the above paragraph. I was wrong. So, twisted, devastatingly wrong. Last week, Peter and I were going over annual employee reviews in office late one night. Lyle forgot to lock up Isaac's old office, and I just... I don't give a shit who they want to put in there now. It's it's always going to be Isaacs. Okay. Also, Miss Danny, it's not my place to judge him for how he how he was towards the end. The man that left here was not Danny Albright. He was a shining star here, one of the best. He helped train some of the best too. But this place turned him bad, sour in the soul almost. You know, you know how some places can can be haunted by energetic connotations. Well, that's how I think this place is. BFCH has been open for basically ever. All the callers we couldn't help. The sadness seeped in through the lines. The existential trivialness of the job. It, it adds up. Anyway, last night I was there. And I noticed that one of the ceiling tiles was completely a different shade than the others. They all had a thin layer of dust on them, except for one in the left rear corner of the office. My curiosity got the better of me, since I was the last one in the building beside security, Alan. Peter went home just minutes before. Something told me to stay behind. I'll never know if it was the right choice or not, but it brought me here today. After much effort, I was able to push the desk towards the back wall. I climbed atop it and stretched myself as tall as I could in order to move the tile. It moved easily enough. My fingers danced around the inside until I felt something flat and square. A manila folder presented itself to me once my hand became visible enough to recognize. Brighter Futures SH Annual Performance Reviews was stamped on the top right corner in red ink. Questions and thoughts swarmed my mind like ants on a carcass. Performance reviews. I folded the metal braid, practically tearing them off in my curious frenzy. It looked like it contained files, 30 or more of them. The first page of each file had a square, candid photograph attached to the corner. It was odd, but these pictures looked like they were taken during people's everyday errands. No one seemed to be looking directly at the camera. I'm not even sure they knew they were being photographed. Temps had their own section, followed by employee terminations. I put the word in quotations because every one of them is dead now. Police reports, crime scene photos were all included. Sasha's was one of the first photos I'd seen. I was surprised to see her in the terminated section. 
HR told everyone she'd transferred to the Melbourne, Florida office. She was medically required to take an insulin injection every day. They have new auto-injectable pens that were much safer. I never understood why she preferred the syringes. Maybe once you do something long enough, a certain way throughout your life, it's hard to convert. Anyway, according to the report, her husband Henry stated that he had found her body lying cold when he got home after working a double shift that day. Looks like she just injected herself over and over again. Empty vials were scattered throughout the floor. The refrigerator door was left open along with the inner drawer where her insulin was kept. The last text message that he received from her was just an hour after he'd left for work that morning. She said, You can't stop it. And Vanita Brown, my lord, that sweet woman, she was a bright light in the darkness here. She was always the first to bring baked goods or gift baskets for an occasion. The look on her face when they all went to give Tony his cake, I think it pushed her over the edge. Vinita was found lifeless on her couch surrounded by empty vodka bottles and pill wrappers. Her face smashed into the coffee table in front of it. The picture included showed where the blood had pooled inside her cheek after it stopped circulating. It was as black as death is imagined. She was one of the strangest among them. Well, us, I guess I should say. I never thought that she would feed into the evils of this place. It didn't seem to affect her, but I guess everyone has their limits. Employees were told that Vanita had moved to care for her ailing grandmother near the Serenity Falls Brighter Futures location. Management files were thickest of all. The next section of files included all the employee calls, successes, and fails. That this was HR, they'd certainly put a lot of work into this just to hide it away in an old office. I thought maybe Danny was behind it until I got to his file halfway through. He'd been recorded and reviewed just like everyone else. The last pages of the files turned my blood cold. There were reports about things like romantic social status, if they had children, and if, if so, what schools they went to. Suggestions about who would be best paired with each employee, pets, travel logs, uh, fuck, there was even food preferences in here. I wondered what any of this had to do with call center work. It was, it was all downright violating. The files I looked at thus far had all had an, an effect on the company at one time or another. Danny was the first to kill himself in the job, followed by several others. It seemed to be an inescapable domino effect. The very last file belonged to me. The picture was of me smiling at my son in the grocery store, pushing him in a race car shopping cart. I never gave authority or have any knowledge of this photograph being taken. I certainly didn't feel comfortable with some folder being stashed away containing a picture of my child. Out of all the information I was presented with, one thing gnawed at me the most. Like digestive acids eating away at the, the empty stomach. Someone was missing. John. John had desperately wanted to work for the company. He would apply every week. He'd come down to the office to inquire about it just hours after sending. He would, he would contact new employees hired on, asking them how they got the job, who they talked to, what they said to them, etc. I couldn't understand it. Why? After everything that had happened here, John spent so much time and energy trying to get hired on here. What... When everyone else in, this, in some way, shape, or form was trying to get out. And then when he finally did get hired on due to being drastically low staffed, he didn't last one week as management. So they sent him over to my section, accounting. He was officially the only employee to have ever been demoted from BFCH during my years here. Could he be the one behind all this? He was the last one to occupy Isaac's office, albeit very briefly. What was the goal, though? Placing the folder back into the ceiling, I silently slid the desk back to its original location. I made sure to remove my file, of course, first, planning to shred it or burn it later. The rest of the workday flew by. I couldn't wait to get home and destroy this intrusion into my life. After debating for too long, I decided to burn the file. It's more dramatic that way. Symbolic, if you will. I walked into work the next day, feeling refreshed. 
And see, burning my file should keep me off the radar. Just where I like to be. Be careful what you wish for, right? I greeted the first shift worker cheerfully. Good morning. No one replied. A few glanced up from their desks with confused expressions. Others looked annoyed that I was even there. The new girl walked over to Alan nonchalantly and whispered something in his ear. Her eyes were on me the whole time. Next thing I know, I'm being escorted out of the building and threatened with a trespass order. As much as I hated to go outside after dark, my dog Greta needed to be walked, so I, I put my mace in my pocket, I grabbed her leash, I headed out the door, blared music on my phone while walking. Maybe, maybe that's why I didn't hear anyone behind me. A hand grabbed my shoulder and spun me around. The man connected to it was one that I'd seen before but almost didn't recognize. His name was Nick. He quit shortly after I'd gotten hired. Signs of stress and aging were heavy on his face since the last time that we'd met. His gravelly voice cut through the still night air like a katana. You got rid of the file, didn't you, Miss Ashley? He asked with a disapproving shake of his head. I, I did. I thought I had to. They had no right to have that information. What's happening? No one at work today recognized me. Alan even escorted me out of the building like, like he'd never met me before in his life. Of course not. You've been erased. You made sure of that when you burned that file. I get why you did it, but it was a mistake. And now... Now they're coming for you. A lot of us are getting on a plane to confront the problem head on. Join us. Nick handed me a card with a flight and phone number on it. And then left. Which brings us to now. I can't get his words out of my head. There's only one thing that I can't think to do. The only thing that can possibly stop this. I'm getting on that plane with the others. We're going to expose everything and take them down. The power of numbers is a beautiful thing. And there's no way they can get to all of us. Hey there, kids, it's me, Mr. Creepypasta, and I just wanted to say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for watching tonight's video or listening to tonight's episode. Also, since it's getting a lot colder, I could tell you that you can probably pick up some nice hot teas from my wife's tea shop, Ivory Monocle Tea. That's etsy.com slash shop slash Ivory Monocle Tea. And you can get teas that are themed on Dungeons and Dragons, on horror, on creepypastas, and even things like Avatar The Last Airbender. Especially, I wanted to give a big thank you to Jordan Alexander Sanchez, Mr. Thud, Ken Lando Higuchi, Champinsky, Bobby Carmen, Nico Kao, Tristan Pelton, Chase Burnett, Deanna Krauss, King Hades F13, Unknown Nobody, Joshua McMeekin, Michael Scarborough, Kazan, this is my real name, no shit, Jason VB Wilson, Infernal One, Little Wolf Gaming, Jimbo the Hutt, Caspian, Jordan Nels, Hades Nephew, Jordan Wayne Deckart, Brandy Lipe, Ann Sharon, Acid System, Mike Bullock, Prozac and Pancake Appreciation Society, Brian Ark, Cryptic Nightmares, Shadow Morningstar, Someone You Love, S Man, Kieran the Sloth, Thomas Burgett, Liam Newman, Sky Harbor, Caleb Dougal, Nina Smith, Rafael Rodriguez, The Ginger Bros, Aaron Stormcrow, Daniel Paulson, and Corey X. Kenshin. Thank you guys so much for being supporters on Patreon. You guys are seriously the MVPs as well as everybody who's listed down there in the description down below. I hope all of you have enjoyed the stories with me, and sweet dreams. <laughs>